Welcome, Hillwood, to another for wonderful edition of Back in the Day Friday with Old Man Nevitt. I'm Ryan. How you doing, Old Man Nevitt? Doing great. How about you, Ryan? I'm doing good. Let's take a look in the mailbag today. All right. Dear Old Man Nevitt, since there was no YouTube back then, where would you put your videos, and where or how should you share them to people? Sincerely, Kyle. 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 Listen to me, Kyle. Obviously, you're a fan of our show here back in the day, Friday, because you wrote into our mailbag. So, you should already know the answer to this. Didn't you pay attention? All right, we've got a special guest here today on Back in the Day Friday, actual Hillwood student. This is Ethan. He's brought in a Back in the Day artifact. What do we have here, Ethan? It's a vintage film reel projector. All right, vintage film reel projector. This is actually a Bell & Howe 8 millimeter film projector. That's how we showed him. It's like you haven't learned anything at all, Kyle. Come on, pay attention, son. We would use the Bell & Howe film reel projector. And people had to come over to your house. You actually had to sit down and say, hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. Face-to-face -face interaction. You put the reel on, you play it, and you watch it. Yeah, that's the only way to share it, unless you want to actually produce it. Go to the movie theater, watch it in the movies, watch it on television. So you actually had to Bring the people in your home, sit down together, interact, you know, maybe have some chips and some salsa, watch the videos together. You know, it was nice. We actually had some face-to-face. -face. I'm sorry that you missed out on it. Your generation missed out on it. Teacher, Mr. Nevitt, what do we have today for an artifact? All right, got a pretty good back-in-the-day artifact today. I bet that this is something that you've never used in your life, Drigsy. Let me show you here how this works. So, any ideas yet? Any guesses about what this might be? Magical expanding paper. <laughs> magical expanding Well, it is an expanding paper uh, from a literal standpoint, but there's no magic about it. I'm just, like any normal human being, I'm just uh, folding it out, expanding it on my own. Now, take a look at, take a look at that. What do you think? I have one more guess. All right. Modern art. <laughs> Modern art. But you think it's like a Jackson Pollock? or something, abstract expressionism. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it, it might look like chaos, but there's actually a pattern here. This is a map, an old school paper map. So I'm sure that you've never actually used anything like this, right? No. So when, when you uh, need to find where you're going, when you need to figure out what road to take, where it is, what do you do? I use my phone. Of yeah, course. GPS. yeah, yeah. That, that's what that's what the kids do now. They use the phone, the GPS, look it up, and then you just follow a little blue dot, don't you, the whole, the whole way until you show up there. Well, we didn't have that kind of technology back in the day, so we had to use these uh, these actual paper maps. This is the map of the United States, but the maps date way, way back back in the day. The first known maps were uh, found 2,300 years old by the Babylonians. They're on clay tablets. But in uh, Chinese literature, they actually make references to the maps all the way back to the 7th century BC. So we're talking like over 8,000 years of map making uh, at the least. Map making is actually called cartography. Cartography uh, is from the Greek for map and, and write, to, to make a map. And so maps developed through the years. Uh, the Greeks, Romans, and Egyptians made advances. In the first century, this guy named Ptolemy, this Roman, uh, did a book called Geographia. You know what that means? Uh, geography. Hey, you speak Latin. All right, way to go, Drigsy. Uh, not many people speak back in the day that language is like that. Yes, it means uh, geography. And so then the maps, you know, there was no satellites taking pictures of, of the world like we have now. So the maps had to be based on actual experience. You explore, you draw the map, then you base your next maps on the ones uh, that, are, that are there before and future exploration, uh, things like that. So. This is a map of the United States. You can see, uh, you can see all the roads, the interstates um, there, the, the major highways. But what if you want to zoom in? You know, how do you zoom in when you're using your phone? There's a zooming button. It's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you know do the little the little zoom thing. Well, you can't do that here. See, uh, no, nothing, nothing. It won't zoom in. It's just a paper. So then you have to get another map. We go from the United States to right here, fold this one out, and uh, you got the state of Texas. State of Texas right here. So now, 
we've zoomed in and see there's a lot more minor roads here as we zoom in, um, as we zoom in Texas. Texas on the U.S. map, Texas on the, uh, on the state map. What if we wanted just the Dallas-Fort Worth area? What if we wanted the streets, uh, you know, local streets? What do you think we'd do? Get another map. That's right, get another map, get a city map, open up, zoom it in. So back in the day, when you're driving around, when you're on a trip, you got all these maps, and it was actually a lot of fun. You kids think, probably think, oh, that's so much work, fold it and unfold I can't do that. But it was actually a lot of fun to sit there in the car on the trip and plan out what road you're gonna take, where you're gonna go, watch the miles pass by, and, uh, and try to see where you are. So we'll do a we'll do a little little trip here um, for you uh, later this year. As you might know, later this year, um, a lot of eighth graders are going to Washington D.C. So here's your challenge, Driggsy. If you were going from Fort Worth to Washington D.C., what route are you going to take? See if you can plan. See if you can plan our trip. We're flying, but what if we were driving? Plan our driving trip to Washington D.C. I've traveled every road in this here land I've been everywhere, man I've been everywhere, man Across the deserts, bare man I breathe the mountain air, man I travel, I've had my share, man I've been everywhere I've been to Reno, Chicago, Fargo, Minnesota, Buffalo, Toronto, Winslow, Sarasota, Wichita, Tulsa All right, Mr. Nevitt, I think I have it. All right, what you gonna what you gonna take? Uh, I believe you take I thirty. All right, we'll show the we'll show the kids here. We're taking I thirty out of Fort Worth. Uh, then we take I forty out of Little Rock. All right, so we hit Little Rock, Arkansas here. We're gonna take I forty. So we're heading uh, we're heading east here. Remember, uh, never eat sour watermelons right. north north uh, south east and west. Then we have I eighty one into Knoxville. All right, so we're taking uh, eighty one into uh, Knoxville, Knoxville, Tennessee, um, right here. At last, we have sixty six into DC. All right, yeah, that makes sense. 66, you hit there right here, Washington, D.C., and we follow the road. And remember, there's, you know, there's not just one right way. That's one of the fun things about the map. There's a, you know, a few different ways you could do it. I think that sounds like a great uh, map. Did a great job, Driggsy. Um, you, you have now your back-of-the-day map certification. Congratulations, thank and uh, thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Back in the day. Hey, how's it going, Green Hand? Good, good. Hi there, uh, Purple Backpack. How you doing? Good. Good. Hey, OMG. Feeling good today? Good. How's it going, Mom? Here. Oh, red shirt. Nice. Hey, how's it going? Hat and arms. Pretty good. How are you? Good. Good. Let's uh, let's uh, hat in the arms. Oh, well, this is for Autism Awareness Day. Did you know it's a Saturday? Uh, no, I did not know that. What's autism? What's autism? Well, I'm glad you asked. Hey, leopard lady. How's it going, Blondie? What are you doing? I was saying hi to my friends. Oh, yes, but I much prefer to use people first language. This is Glinda. Glinda enjoys wearing leopard print shirts. She also enjoys vacationing. She's also a receptionist here at Hillwood Middle School. Do you see how I use people first language? Her name is Glinda. Hi, Glinda. She's not defined by what she's wearing. And Blondie, as you referred to her, this is Miss Gaddis. She loves to go shopping. She also happens to be the attendance clerk here at Hillwood Middle School. People first language. Let's go. We got some more words here. Okay. So, so what is autism? Well, autism is kind of an umbrella. There's a lot of people who are diagnosed with the autism spectrum disorder. And it's usually about, I think right now in America, it's one in 68 kids are diagnosed with autism. So, Autism can come in all sorts of different shapes and forms. A lot of times, kids with autism, you might not even know they have autism, but they might have problems interacting socially, or they might um, have problems communicating the way you and I communicate. But just because they have autism does not mean that they're defined by that disability. 
Something that we are trying to teach in the world of disabilities is disability and autism awareness. So this Saturday is Autism Awareness Week or Weekend, and on Saturday you're supposed to wear blue to show your support for autism. We've been talking about people first language. Do you know what that is? It's when you say the people first? Perfect. It's just what it sounds like. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I have some friends here in my hat. This... Blue shirt guy. Well, he is wearing a blue shirt, but this is Landry. Landry is a friend of mine who loves OSU Cowboy basketball and Cowgirl basketball. He is probably the coolest guy you'll ever meet and gives the best high fives. Landry also has a traumatic brain injury that causes him not to be able to function in society like you and I do. So, Landry's a really cool guy, but he's not defined by his disability. This... Huggy boy. He's the best at giving hugs. This is my friend Kyle. Kyle loves to give hugs. You know what else Kyle loves to do? He loves to act. He was the big bad wolf in the Three Little Pigs this summer, and he's awesome at it. But Kyle is also on the autism spectrum. But Kyle's not defined by his disability. We're trying to tell people about people first language. Don't define people by what you see or what you expect them to be. Talk about them first. Talk about their interests and their likes. Oh, hey, old man. I mean, man who is extremely old. You got it. How you doing, Coach John? Good. Do you know about autism? Yeah, in fact, I know that this weekend is Autism Awareness Week, so wear blue this weekend. Wear blue on Saturday. Molly, I love your shirt. Thanks. So, this Saturday is Autism Awareness Day. Did you know that? Yeah, you did. So guys, remember, this Saturday you should wear blue to raise awareness for autism. Like my brother. Hey Huskies, round two has started. Just because you voted for round one doesn't mean you're done. You have to now vote for round two. And here are the winners for round two. Right here. So it looks like we're already at Divergent versus Maze Runner. I don't know, that's going to be a tough one. There's quite a few good ones in here. Vote today. I'm going to reveal the winners of this round at the end of the day on Friday. So don't forget to vote today. Thanks.